We're 50% of our population at 600 million women. We're 10% of the global population. To give you a sense, we're five times the size of Japan, three times the size of Brazil, twice the size of the United States of America. I'm still talking about Indian women. We're not a number, we're a force. As half the population, we also produce and raise the other half. As a democracy, we are half the vote. Presumably, we should also be half the voice, but we are not. And that's exactly what I wanted to get behind. Where are the voices of women? Where are the women of India? And why aren't we talking about them? Let me take you to 2012, a year when India made global headlines because of a brutal rape case. A young woman was raped in the national capital region at a pretty regular hour in the evening. Her insides were culled out, she couldn't survive. I don't call this rape, I call this murder. That's one story that finally got us to talk about women's issues on the front page. It took that kind of a story, that kind of a situation for us to put women and their concerns, which otherwise should be concerns of human rights, national concerns, and we couldn't get them onto the front pages. Let's look at some of the other cases in India. In the last 120 days, more than 150 villages in India have not seen the birth of a single girl child because of female feticide. In India, we've had a tax on sanitary napkins, but we didn't have tax on many luxury items that women otherwise use. In India, we've had a situation, we've had amazing role models, but we've had no time to talk about them. I wonder if any one of you here know that India's mission to the Mars and Moon is actually led by women. So nor do we talk about issues that are critical for women and their development, we also forget to celebrate them as role models. Let's look at the Indian media scenario. We have a situation where a survey was done of which every thousand stories covered, 800 were spent on three things, government, Bollywood, and of course, cricket. Of the 200 left, just a sliver were focused on women's issues. India is a democracy. We start our constitution with really very, very powerful words. We, the people of this nation. Somewhere in that promise of justice, equality, freedom, we forgot our women. And that's how was born She, the People, a platform to talk about the stories of women, issues that matter to them, issues that they want to talk about, their role models, their stories, their journeys. Someone really needed to get up and say, let's put a gender lens on issues around us. And that's why today I'm going to share two stories with you. The first story is of a young woman called Rohini. She was raised in the western part of India, generally considered slightly more progressive than the north. She turned into a master's of science, but when it came to getting married, she was told she's overqualified. Even her parents were worried. She finally did get married. Her in-laws and husband wouldn't let her work. With some conviction, she pushed her husband to go to the city to work and stayed back in the village. She got a mobile phone, logged onto the internet, started learning different kinds of things off YouTube, off WhatsApp, and so on. She became the internet auntie of that village, suddenly teaching everyone how to use the internet and turn into mini entrepreneurs. Soon she realized that that couldn't be a business model that will sustain her, so she started beekeeping and producing honey. In the first month, she made 10 bottles. In the first year, it went to 100. And in three years, she made 500 bottles, branded with her picture and her name, and now sells on e-commerce sites. How many mainstream newspapers covered this? Nobody. Wasn't sexy enough. It wasn't a cool story. It wasn't going to tug at people's hearts, because we were suddenly talking about a role model in a small village. Imagine if we are reporting stories of a 1,000, a 100,000 Rohinis, what it can do to the confidence of women what it can do for us to believe about role models and the way we need to normalize that idea that yes, women do lead math, science, history, culture, and everything else just as well as anybody else. The other story, not a story of success, a story where we all have failed. There's a concept in India called suicide of farmers. Farmer suicides is widely covered 
it gets the front pages, it gets to the politicians. Farmers commit suicide because they are under massive debt. And this is pretty much in most villages in India. What we forget to cover is what the farmers leave behind. They're long gone and dead. Who's left behind? Their wives, the widows, the sisters, the mothers. And what do they have to resort to? Getting more debt, selling themselves and resort to post prostitution, selling their children because they have too many and too, too many mouths to feed. These stories are just never looked at because we sometimes forget that you need a gendered lens to look at these aspects. When other women later on went with investigative uh, understanding of journalism down to these stories, they discovered we were so busy covering the dead. We forgot that they, those who were left behind deserved a much bigger coverage because they are still struggling until today. So I urge everyone here to think about this, that when you go back to your own country, you need to think about how we put the spotlight on women's issues. Do we look at them as those who would just walk the ramp? Or do we look at those who also are changing in small ways an environment around them, who are sparking inspiration through the power of not one, the power of many? And just what could we, each one of us, do to tell that story differently, to improve the language that we use and not be stereotypical? I urge each one of you to think about these issues because at the end of the day, we are talking about half the world. Whoever said that women's rights are human rights, I think that needs to be underscored many times. And I just wanted to say one more thing. That when I started She the People, I didn't think that one media platform could spark change. I did not want to just create headlines after headlines. I think, like many of us, I wanted to create a movement, a movement that connects the dots for all those 600 million women in my country and then helps them believe far more in themselves. Because at the end of the day, they can be no success for we the people without she the people. Thank you.